Uh, okay, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Okay. Um, I'm a bit nervous, uh, but um, okay. Relax. Hey, you want soup, is it? Well, I, I, had, I was meeting some, some other clients. Okay, so um, how many of you want to achieve 19% ROI in your investments? How many of you all have already started investing already? Hey, oh, not, not as many. How many of you have not started investing yet? They, they, they scared to read. Okay, don't worry, I was one of you guys. Okay, so um, my name is Jerain and I am a financial strategist with IAM Advisory, which, um, which is, uh, stands for Integrated Asset Management, where we help to optimize and strategize um, our clients' financial portfolios. Uh, okay, so basically, this is what I'll go through today. Uh, some introduction about myself. Um, how I got started, my investment philosophy, um, my five steps capital allocation method, and uh, some of my trades, which um, you will see how I actually generated my 19% ROI and the Q&A session. Uh, okay? So yeah, my introduction, I just graduated from RMIT, uh, yeah, Econs and Finance, yes. And I used to be from the SIM Investment and Networking Club. So I, I'm not here to like uh, brag and boast about my achievements. Uh, okay? I'm just here to assure you guys that what Caden has taught us right, is actually very valuable. Because this, right, uh, what, what, is, what, Kaden, what uh, Kaden is actually teaching us right, is um, fundamental analysis right, used by the, those top fund managers and those analysts, as well as investment bankers in the, uh, in, in the financial sector, lah, and it's taught in schools as well, okay? So don't, don't, don't have to be afraid of Kaden, that, you know, he, he's like a scam or what, lah, okay? Because <laughs> uh, before, right, I, was, um, I was like one of you guys, uh, about two years ago in the army, okay? Yeah, I was very skeptical of Kaden, <laughs> Me specifically. <laughs> yes, uh, the, the whole course, the whole course. But before that, I read a lot of books about investing because I wanted to be financially free. That was when I was in the army about two years ago. Lah. Okay, so um, I read a lot of books. Then I, 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 I found Caden's Facebook page. That's why I enrolled myself into the, the, pre, the preview session. Then I, I, saw, I saw him, how he spoke, you know, like... I, I, I could sense he was trying to you know, build some trust with his story and all that. Okay? But no issue, I, I, I took the leap of faith and I, I attended this course. So I was in uh, batch, uh, uh, batch 23 and this was me here, if you can see. And my girlfriend is here. Yeah. I managed to con convince her. Ah, no, no. No. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, so um, I, after, after the course, right, I was still very uh, not confident. Uh, I didn't know how to start. Okay, so I went for uh, Cadence uh, coaching first uh, to be a coach for the volunteer, the, the volunteer, uh, volunteer to be a coach. Then I, I signed up for his partner's program and referred some of my, my friends to him. Uh, yeah. So how did I actually get started? You know, after the course, right, I know I learned so much already, but I didn't know how to apply. I was very scared of uh, losing my money, okay? Because I, I, in the army, right, I used to do a lot of binary options, a lot of trading. But then uh, I sort of lost all my money, uh, about $1,000. Lucky it's paper money only, okay? So how did I actually get started? It's actually very simple. Uh, just... Uh, follow the simplest method, which is this uh, STI ETF. Has anyone started investing in this? Okay, it's only $100 a month. You just poke some button in the iBanking there, then they can invest with you. Yeah. So I'm, I'm quite a risk averse uh, investor. Who, who feels that they are risk averse? That means very scared of losing money. Man. Yeah, same thing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Initially, I was um I was in the army also, so I wasn't earning that much. Uh. so my capital was very low. So this is how I just got started. 
So my investment philosophy is very simple. Uh, is, um, it is exactly the same as Warren Buffett and Caden's philosophy. Okay? It's this particular philosophy that I follow very strictly. Okay? Which is be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful. Okay? This particular message, right? It can earn you a lot of money if you just apply this method. Okay, so uh, before I make any move, right? That means before I make any uh, buy or sell trade, right? I will look at the financials first. Okay, the, the three financial statements. The balance sheet, the cash flow statement, income statement. Then after that, I'll look at the ratios. And then I will use the VIA calculator and calculate the intrinsic value. Basically, if you all didn't know, right, the VIA calculator is actually using the discounted cash flow model. This uh, model, right, is actually very widely used in the financial industry. And what, what Caden is teaching is, is, uh, is a very good, very good thing, uh, okay? So, yeah, after that, I'll look at the company news, see whether, uh, I make sure I must understand the business model first, how they actually make money, yeah? And whether there are any expansion plans or any growth uh, in the company, la. okay? Um, for example, I'll see if there's any uh, new product launches, whether they're going to launch in other uh, overseas markets or anything. Then after that, I'll read the news, the market news like the interest rate hikes, the oil price and all that. Okay, so as you can see, uh, this is a very bottom top approach. Bottom top approach. Okay. So when do I buy and sell? Basically, it's very simple. You just follow Caden. Okay. You look for positive and growing financials positive ratios and basically just try and filter all the the stocks using Finviz and the SGX. After that, calculate your intrinsic value using the VIA calculator. You know, even after I, I learned all of those financial uh, valuation methods, uh, all the all those stocks in schools, uh, the dividend growth model, uh, uh, what DDM, DCF, all, all the funny thing lah, all relative valuation. Um, I'm still using Caden's model <laughs> because Caden, right, his Excel sheet, right, he simplified all the math, everything into one specific. Uh, just put in the number, can really. You don't have to do all the math. Yeah. Okay. After that, you have to understand the business model. Make sure it is in your circle of confidence. Okay. This expansion plans part, right, is what I specifically look for every time when I want to buy a stock. Okay, this is very, very important because it will help you to project the revenue growth rate, the income growth rate, and all that. And after that, I'll look at the market news. I'll see whether uh, if there's any negative news that negatively affects the stock price. So if it does, right, it is actually a good thing for you. Okay? Uh, but you have to make sure the news, right, doesn't directly impact the business. For example, um, let's say you want to invest in BreadTalk, right? But um, the news says that the, the Fed rate is going to increase their interest rates. Okay? You know that the, it doesn't really affect bread talk directly. So there is a small opportunity you can you can buy for bread talk. Yeah. Then um sometimes you have to gauge on your, your gut. You have to base on your gut to, to gauge whether the business will be able to tie through the all the bad news. Huh? So when do I sell? Basically the opposite of when do I buy? Huh? Okay, so negative declining financials, declining ratios, meaning your PE ratio or the price to sales ratio, price to book value ratio. Uh, make sure your market price, right, 
as long as your market price is above your intrinsic value, right? You can sell already. Okay. Uh, it, it seems very easy, uh, but when the emotions start to get in, right, it is really not easy at all. Yeah. Uh, when do I sell for company news, right? I'll, I'll, if the company news is, uh, for example, key management leave the company. Example, the Steve Jobs, right? He, he passed away. Man. So immediately, it affected the stock price because uh, it affected the whole business. The innovation part of the Apple, right? It, it went down. Yeah. So some of this, uh, some of this really matters, uh, okay? Yeah, uh, after that, you have to look at also the market news. Make sure the negative news, right? If the negative, if the negative news directly impacts the business, uh, make sure you sell. Uh, okay, that's all. So these five steps capital allocation method, right? Uh, to be honest, I, I forgot where I learned this from. Okay, but I've learned this from... Uh, if I could remember, it's either from Warren Buffett or Phil Town or Peter Lynch. It's either one of his books. Okay. So, so this is not something I kind of came up with myself. Huh? So how you did this, right? Basically, I think you would want to uh, take a picture for the five steps. Huh? Okay, I don't because I don't have the consolidation part. So my first step, right, is to have one portfolio. And since Kato only taught me um, how to invest in Singapore and US stocks, right? We divide it by half. Half Singapore, half US. <coughs> okay? So five US stock, five SG stock. Then make sure one company stock, right? Don't exceed more than 10% of your portfolio. This one I'm right, should be 10%. So for example, right, let's say if my portfolio is $10,000. $10,000 divided by 10 stocks is $1,000 for one stock. So you allocate one company shares, right, for $1,000. The reason why you have to do this, right, is so that um, you don't, it is properly diversified. It is well diversified, okay? So step three, right, what you want to do is you segment your capital into three parts. So you have three bullets to enter, to enter the market, <coughs> okay? So for example, right, one company share is $1,000, you allocated before. Uh. So now $1,000 is divided by these three bullets is $300, $333 for one bullet. So step four, right, you have to use the bullets for every 25% drop of the first buying price. That means, right, for example, ABC shares. Let's say you calculated your intrinsic value is $30 using the VIA calculator. You fact, after you factor in the MOS, your first buying price should be $20. Okay? So this is our first bullet. When the stock price drops, right, to $15, you buy again. So that's our second bullet. When the stock price drops by another five, eh, another $5, they enter again at $10. So this is the 25%? Uh, yes. So it's 25%. What's 25% of $20? is $5, man. So in hours 15 and below, you fire a second bullet? Yes. What if you go up? Go up, don't fire. Yeah, go up, don't fire. <laughs> No, you get ideas, but it's a guide, it's a guide. Yeah, it's only a, it's only a guide. Yeah, you see, if if Jorin don't tell you a guide, you you ask when to fire. Three percent, four percent, ten percent. So you give me a rough guide. Every twenty-five percent drop. So step five, right, is to calculate the number of shares you need to own. So you must take the bullet price divided by the current share price. So for example. <coughs> Take the bullet price, the 300, 333, divided by 
the current market price. So you have 27 shares. This is to let you know um, how many shares to own. Because when you um, buy the, for example, a Singapore stock, right? You need to put in the stock num the number of stocks. So to, to calculate the number of stocks to buy, you just use uh, this step five. Okay, then I'll move on to my tricks on how I actually implemented this strategy. Okay, so the first one, right, is this DBS. Good holdings. Yes. So after I bought my ETF, right, um, I was still hesitant. Uh. So I, I just found a random blue chip company and just look at the financials first. Uh, apply what Kaden use. Okay. And then I bought my first stock at two years ago. Still in the army. Only bought 100 stocks. Uh. By the time, it's a lot of money already. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I bought at sixteen dollars. <laughs> After you bought the share price drop. Yes. <laughs> Anyone know what happened in two thousand and fifteen? China, yeah, China, China, they devalue their yuan, so they decrease a bit. Then interest rate, right? The U.S. interest, U.S. federal in hike their interest rate. So everyone thinks the economy is uh, contracting. Uh, okay. Uh, at the same time, right, oil prices uh, start to fall also due to oversupply. So that is what led to the decline in the banks. Uh. But then um, when I bought this, right, because initially the price was at 22. So if it went down, I was quite happy. Uh. Then I bought at 16. At the point in time, right, I was, I was quite happy. Uh. I told my, my mom uh, I bought my first stock already. But then uh, after a few days, uh, it started to go down even more and more and more. 16, 15, 14. Oh, I'm very scared. Eh. Very scared, very scared. Until here. Eh. I told myself, I, I, I don't buy anymore. Because uh. uh, at that point in time, uh, my portfolio right, is only $5,000. Yeah, so I allocate very precisely and properly. Okay. Okay, so eventually, right? Uh, in March, I start to buy again. You didn't fire the bullet? Eh? This is the bullet. <laughs> this is the first bullet, second bullet. <laughs> As you can see, uh, it's not really a 25% <laughs> drop. Uh. It's not a great, really a 25% dip. The 25% is just a guideline. If I want to wait until 25%, I think this one will be like 12, almost $10 already. Which uh, may not happen because uh, it was thirteen dollars man. So I bought at okay uh, fourteen uh. I was still a, a bit sad uh. Okay, so this AP uh, is my average price, so it's fifteen dollars. So total quantity I own is two hundred dollars, eight two hundred shares. At the point in time, I was uh, yeah, I just started school uh, so I was still very scared uh, Yeah. Yes, so I waited, waited, waited. I read a lot of news uh, on why the banks fell, why the bank shares fell and why it raised up. Okay, and eventually I sold my first bullet at $18. Oh, you sold first bullet? Yeah. Actually, you cannot really count sell first bullet, sell second bullet. It's <coughs> because, average. right, yeah, average price is 15 Okay, so your my realized gain is already 16% already. Yeah, just because I held on during very tough times. After that, I sold at 2017, uh, April. I sold at $19. So, uh, realized gain 21%. Uh. So, uh, the reason, I think more importantly, is the reason why I buy and sell. Uh. Okay, the reason why I buy, uh, I've told you before, because of the, the macro outlook it was uh, terrible and everyone thought the banks were like uh, falling because uh, many banks right they loan money to to oil companies 
So when the oil price dropped, right, many oil companies closed down. So everyone thought like the banks, right, will will lose money, uh, and and they eventually did. They did lose money, but I thought that you know, uh, MAS wouldn't let DBS form, uh, because there's so many people, all our savings are all inside, right? Who is DBS here? Most people, right? Okay. So the reason why I sell, right, is because my intrinsic value was around sixteen dollars like that. So it was above my intrinsic value already. Then at the same time I realized that I, I, I was afraid that it may go down again. Because the oil price wasn't uh, that stabilized yet. And then eventually I sold here at $19 because I felt that uh, the oil price, right, it was still quite uncertain. And I felt that maybe the next quarter, right, uh, it, the, the liabilities will increase because of the oil price uh, not, not going up as fast. Uh, okay. Okay, so my next stock right is OCBC. Okay. So I bought one in January 2016. That was uh, right after I bought my my DBS. 16 I bought at uh, eight dollars. Again, the reason why I buy is because of the, the same macro outlook. Uh. So you realize that every time you buy stock it drops, right? Eh? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it happened to all of us and you can uh, like that. Uh. You will never be able to buy at the yeah, rock bottom, the top. and you will never be able to sell at the, at the top. So, I bought my, my first hundred, then I sold at here, nine dollars. So my realized gain is ten ten percent here. Now, um, this is my third stock. I bought Dutec Holdings. I bought at the thing. <laughs> and this was in 2017, eh, where I have a lot of like a lot of financial knowledge uh, from all the school. Uh, teach me all the <laughs> all the valuation method. Well, I thought I was very smart not one. very smart really. <laughs> so what we did uh, when I was in the SIM investment networking club, right? I did a lot of uh, we, we had to form into groups to to study individual stocks. Then after that present to the, the seniors uh, like an analyst like that. So this was the stock that I studied. Then wow, so nice go up. <laughs> when I studied right, it was here. The stock price was at 0 0.35. So I waited, 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 then I bought at here. I thought it would go up. Huh? Then what happened, right, was that wow, it dropped all the way, even more. But eventually you buy even more, 800. I bought at 38 cents. So my unrealized loss uh, is 22%, eh, even with all the financial knowledge. Yeah. So it doesn't mean, uh, it doesn't matter how, how knowledgeable you are, okay? As long as, just keep your investment philosophy simple, okay? And apply what you learn. But the reason why I still bought is because I still have some confidence in this company. Uh, this company, uh, they make ATMs. And the reason why they drop, right, is because of uh, the rising steel prices in China. I personally, I, I'm, I'm also not very sure whether I should hold on or sell it off because steel prices, I don't know how far it will go up. Yeah. Then uh, my last stop is uh, Riverstone Holdings. Okay, this company makes rubber medical gloves. Okay. So I bought one at 0 0.95 and now it's currently here. So my unrealized gain is 15%. And the reason why I bought right is because the financials look, uh, look very good and I'm very positive. And the industry itself is very uh, quite quite stable. Oh yeah, I still have one more stock here. Uh, you, this is my US stock, my first US stock. You know, every stock, right? See? Uh, I, I can only manage to afford four only. But, yeah, but it didn't matter because I was more focused on the, on the skill. 
rather than the, the money. Uh. Cause right. Yeah, boy, it's only a bit regret. Uh. He went down all the way because of like some drug test failed. Yeah. After that he went up again because I think they acquired some company. Yeah. Yeah. So he went down all the way, then he went up. So my aunt first gain is okay, I still got gain four percent. But over here I was like, uh quite regret it just just grew it. <laughs> you know uh, actually like, this is actually a, a good sign you know, because you can never buy at the dip. Usually how people uh, make money from investing right, is they buy when the stock price is going down. They buy on the way down and they sell on the way up. Because you will never be able to sell here and buy, buy here. Which is why the bullet is necessary. Yes. Especially if you don't use uh, dollar cost averaging. Okay, so this is my summary. That's nineteen percent here. Only one stock. But, <laughs> but I think it's still quite decent. Because over here I got no financial knowledge, only cadence knowledge. Yeah. DBS O C B C. Yeah. My Lutech still losing money, but never mind. <laughs> then uh yeah. This two. Okay, so these are some of the recommended books to read. Okay, this one, this one very good. I like this guy, Phil Town. Um, yeah, you can read Warren Buffett's books. Yeah, basically you read as much as possible, try and learn as, as fast as possible and try and apply as fast as possible, okay? Yeah, okay, that's all. No, 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 by, by the way, I think it's quite humble. humble. I, mean, I mean, the, the fact, fact that he, he just got started, started uh, to me, actually, this portfolio, portfolio is considered very good. Now, uh, and we, we need to realize that once you create a portfolio, we will never have all winners. We will always have one or two losers. But the winners must be able to outshine the losers so that the world is positive. And the way I look at it, I think it's Zen Good Yeah, for one year, it's very, very good. And his learning lessons, I think, is quite intelligent and very logical. And it's not open, but he doesn't actually this. You know, he gives the exact and then, and then he looked really shy, shy but I only buy 100 stocks, you know that kind of thing. It's really very nice. And then you need to rain as well. I really appreciate that. I really expect you to. Any questions? Maybe one question? Then later, see if you can ask. Yeah, right? Just because these stocks, even though after you buy the stocks, but you collect some dividends or long period. Ah, yes. Uh, all these returns, right, are not including dividends. It's just capital gains. Uh, I was a little bit foolish uh, because right, my DBS and OCBC, right, I converted the dividends into actual stocks. So it was very little. So they give me, for example, right, I think DBS gave me about uh, $10. So I converted it into a few <laughs> stocks. Uh. So I got two or three in one, in, in two or three DBS. So it's very hard uh, for me to sell now. Yeah, a lot. Yeah. So best is just to uh, just collect the dividends. Any other things? One last question. Uh, yeah. Uh, please. Uh, no, I don't do options at all. No, no capital. Uh, one, one last one. What's your thoughts on the trading commission? Oh, commission. Okay. Uh. First of all, right, initially I wasn't too very concerned about the, the commissions because uh, I was more focused on the skill. Because if you can make, uh, if you have a capital right, of $100,000 and I apply the same skill, right, I'm able to make 19% returns on the same 100k. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in terms of the commissions, right, uh, I'm, I'm using poems. So it is 10, there's a promotional rate, uh, $10. No, I think it's $5. Yeah. 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 The account has money, I think it's five dollars. Five dollars for buy and sell. Yeah. Okay, okay. Ninja, can we give a round of applause again?